In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In order to more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, your God heavenly. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barabbas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem, and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. 
He also spoke and debated with the Hellenist, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and within the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter to St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not contem condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them, and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gives us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Spirit of God be in your heart. Thank you for the be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you O lord Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. <clears throat> remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to remain and to be pruned. Those are two concepts that are central to today's gospel. To remain, to be pruned. It's that time of year where we're all planting our gardens, right? We're familiar with this, that in order to allow maximum growth, we need to prune off, especially on a tomato plant. You need to prune certain offshoots so that the nutrients aren't all going just to the growth of the plant, but are being directed to the parts of the plant that are going to produce the fruit. No one buys a tomato plant to look at its particularly beautiful green leaves. We want to make a tomato sandwich. So you've got to prune it to maximize the fruit it's going to give us. We also know that when we prune something, we've killed it. Fresh flowers, I think, and I love fresh flowers on the altar and vases when I have people over for dinner, but there's always something sad. The second you cut that flower away from its root, its time on this earth is limited because it is no longer remaining connected to the root. And through the root, it receives its nourishment. It receives its life. Christ is reminding us today that we have to remain connected to the vine. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. We receive our sustenance from remaining connected to the Lord. And in particular, we have to stay connected to our roots. And our roots is our faith. And the nourishment we receive is the sacramental life of the church. 
in a most perfect way what we do every Sunday, come and receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. That is how we're nourished. And when we're nourished, we can glorify God. And as John's Gospel concludes, he says, by this is my Father glorified, that you bear great fruit. The nutrients that we put into a plant bear fruit. The graces that God puts into our lives through the sacraments should bear fruit. God gives us these wonderful gifts in our life, but we have to do something with them. And that is how he's glorified. When we do something with the gift that he has given. A part of this process is we ourselves have to be pruned at times. It's not a particularly enjoyable process. But if we think about it, anything in life that we want to become good at, whether that's when we're young and an, we're an athlete, whether it's playing a musical instrument, whether it's being an actor on the stage, whether it's learning how to bake or cook, whether it's learning how to change the transmission in my car, this knowledge isn't just downloaded into our head, we have to practice at it. We have to try and try and many times fail and fail. Failure is the ultimate pruner because it casts away and cuts off the ego and it humbles ourself to allow God to work so that the pressure isn't always on us to make this happen. We prune ourselves in the most perfect way when we cut away the sin. We try to take those things that are sapping energy away from us bearing fruit in the world. And that's not an easy thing for us to confront the sins in our life and say, I am going to confront this, overcome this, so that I can bear more fruit in the world for God. It may be a long pruning process, but it is vital and essential to the Christian life. So today we are presented with those two ideas that if we want to glorify God, we must bear fruit. If we want to bear fruit, we must remain connected to the source of our life. And we must continually challenge ourselves to grow. To grow through prayer, turning away from sin, through our own sacrifices and mortifications, through our service to one another. When we do these two things, challenge ourselves to be a better and better person, a stronger Catholic, cleaving off all those things that draw us away from God. And when we remain rooted to him and allow him to nourish us with those graces, it is then we bear fruit and truly then that we glorify God. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, <clears throat> consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come.
confident in our Father's love and mercy, we offer to him now our needs and our prayers. For the successors to the apostles and the church today, commissioned to preach to the people that, like Peter, they may boldly proclaim the resurrection of Christ and the forgiveness of sins in his name, we pray to the Lord. That Jesus, the cornerstone, may not be rejected by the builders of our society, but that the right hand of the Lord may be exalted in him, building nations with life, justice, morality, and peace, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that all Christians may offer to the Paschal victim their thankful praises today, renewing their vows to him with joy and gratitude for his victory of divine love, we pray to the Lord. For all, all our faithful departed ones who are signed with the cross of Jesus, that the power of his glorious resurrection may bring them rejoicing into the wedding banquet of heaven, we pray to the Lord. And for all those personal prayers and intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we, your children, entrust to you these our needs. Draw near to us now and answer these prayers which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Lord, accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Genevieve, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have fed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Registration is, is underway for Totus to us, a children's faith programming program coming to St. Genevieve Parish this June. You don't want your children to miss this Catholic summer program run by energetic, faith-filled college students. Sign-up farms are at the entrances of church for children who will enter grades one through six next school year. Early bird registration ends on May 12th. Just a reminder, please remember to turn in your annual Catholic appeal card. All cards must be signed and returned either to the parish center or the archdiocese. It's a sacramental uh, time of year. We had last Saturday our first Holy Communion. This Wednesday, our eighth graders received the sacrament of confirmation when the Archbishop was here. Um, yesterday was the ordination of one of our uh, transitional deacons for the archdiocese, and shortly we'll have priesthood ordination. So actually next weekend will be Deacon Jeff's last weekend here. We've, we're only blessed to have him for a semester, but he certainly, uh, I think, did a fantastic job and, and uh, He'll return after that week to uh, South Dakota where maybe the snow has melted by then and uh, he'll be ready to be ordained a priest at the end of May. So please keep him in your prayers. Um, we're going to do a second collection next week, a little, little campaign for him to send him off a little farewell gift because, you know, priests don't need another crucifix or another rosary. Guys coming out of the seminary need cash because <laughs> they've got they got vestments to pay off and student loans to start paying on, so we'll, we'll maybe give them a little bit of a jump start and, and, and really just pray for them in the, this final month, especially these final days at the seminary where motivation is very low. Uh, so we'll pray for that and we'll pass the hat next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.